The Square Ball Podcast. Well, bonjour. Welcome to the show. Dan here with Michael and with Rob. Ça va? Ça va bien, merci et tout? Oui, ça va. Comme si, comme ça. We face Coventry this weekend. Solomon's out. Strauch's a doubt. Verba might be going for an operation. Lobotomy, maybe. Um, the women have won twice in a week, but the 21's lost, which at least brought the 1 1 draw streak to an end. Um, and Rasmus might be off. Oh, Wait. no. <laughs> Where do we start? How will we cope? But yeah, they're, um, they're daft enough to actually want to sign him. Their manager even admitted it at the weekend, albeit there is a story saying they will try and renegotiate the, the price that had previously been agreed. But whatever they offer, just accept it leads before, uh, before they get to see any more of him. Yeah. I mean, the, the German media summed him up quite well. Um, which I think this is meant to be praised, but they said, despite his footballing and technical weaknesses, Christensen is a valuable player. The Dane is not always flawless and has looked bad when conceding a goal. But his strengths outweigh his weaknesses. So, sort of agree with half of that paragraph, I would say. Mm, yeah, if we, can, if we can not make a loss on him, it'd be a miracle. <laughs> and another feather in our crown is that right? Feather to, the, to our bow? One of those. Feather in your cap, I think. Feather in your cap. That's, that's what, what I was after. For. Yeah. Feather, another feather in your cap for our PSR champions bid. Mm. And another way to just say, well done, Victor Alter. Thank you very much for all your fine work. So it is Coventry at the weekend. And uh, we know that Solomon's out for another, another game or two. It looks like it might be the other side of the international break with, uh, with bad wins, uh, with good wins. It might, it might make it back before Sunderland. Is that the last one? Mm. Although his injury seems to have expanded. Say, yeah, it's they, getting worse, isn't it? They mentioned him back the other week and now they're like, oh, he's Andy's hamstring. Right. It'll be his calf next week, won't it, as well? I mean, it's not it's not completely unexpected, isn't this? No. People did say he's really good, but he will be out injured a lot. And we've managed, this will be two games in, two games out, won't it, once he misses mm. this one? There was an interview with Isaac Schmidt on Leeds Live this week. And he was basically saying how he uh, he nearly dropped out of professional football because he was mm. completely riddled with injury in his early years. I thought, oh, great. That's just what I want to hear from our new <laughs> left back. <laughs> You're really fitting. Um, the other one to note was that the big sexy pirate, Pascal Strauch, is a doubt for the weekend, which I guess with the absence of Verba, who may be going for an operation, as I mentioned, um, would mean Ampadu maybe back into the back four. And who's going to step into midfield? Joe Rothwell. <laughs> Joe Rothwell. <laughs> Joe Rothwell. Joe <Yeah>. Rothwell. <laughs> I'm starting to think Farker might put Rothwell in just to spite me. Yeah, I think that it's actually probably is the most likely option. Knows the division. Mm. Tanaka can play after Christmas. It would be nice to see either of them. I feel like, I mean, I missed that Middlesbrough League Cup game, which is probably for the best because I don't think it was very pretty viewing. Mm. But to see either of them would be good just to find out if they're rubbish or not. Yeah. It is. People have been asking for changes in midfield, so maybe the big sexy pirate must suffer so we can actually see this. What about our left back? He's been a bit injured this week. Came back into training, but might be touch and go. Mm. He was a doubt last week, and his knee was very strapped up at Cardiff. So, yeah, he'd, I mean, again, having now found out that Isaac Schmidt is a wreck, I hope Junior <laughs> Firpo doesn't return to his uh, previous form. Um, if only somebody had made a mug of him. Oh, this mug. Yeah, oh, there just happens oh, to be one there. Our there fastest, is. our fastest selling item ever, I believe. Um, I think it is. Yeah, the yeah. Farkin ones did well to begin with, but I don't think they went. They didn't go out of the blocks quite as quick as as Junior. So, no. well done, Junior. So you can find that at thesquareball.net, can't you? That mug, along with other stuff. Wow. I finally put the low field scarves on there today, actually, which we've had since last Christmas. <laughs> um, All right, George Michael. Well, we've sold them at the ground, in fairness, but they've they've never actually made it to the website until now. So have a look at those two. Yes, they're very very nice. Like they're tiled like the low fields. Indeed, tunnel, aren't they? But don't smell of piss. Not all of them. Crucially, only the ones Michael's worn. Exactly. Uh, so how are you feeling ahead of the weekend then? Going into Coventry, they've not had a great start because they've lost uh, Callum O'Hare. Has been he's obviously gone back to the streets. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, they're not they're not a good start at all, have they? Um, I sort of feel like they had one over on us last year, didn't they? Mm. We we didn't get going in either game. And we should probably have beaten them at Ellen Road, but it was one of those that it felt like just time ran out on us somehow. It was like, we're, we're going to win this. And then 
you get to the last minute and you're like, oh, we're not winning this, as it turns out. Um, and then away, it was in that end of season wobble, wasn't it, when we lost down there? Although we started off quite well. We should have been ahead in that game early doors. I can't remember why what happened. We had some chances. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the one where Pirel missed right at the end, wasn't it? Yes. I followed that game on Twitter, walking around some ruins in Italy somewhere, yeah. and uh, neither of those things were fun. Mm. But yeah, they had, um, it was a big man, big man combo that did for it. It was Hadji Wright and Sims, wasn't it, up front, and we just couldn't really cope with the physicality of, of them. Um, but yeah, they're not doing brilliantly. I did notice their team, they've signed... Um, a guy called Jack Rodoni, who you might remember, who was a real prick for Huddersfield last year. Right. In midfield, little blonde idiot. I was going to say, did he have annoying hair? Yes. I can't remember anything he did. Dickhead's but... hair. Mm. Yeah. He just really, I don't know, he was the most irritating player Huddersfield had last year. What I did find out about them, though, I looked at our old friends who scored. Do you know what one of their weaknesses is? Finishing chances. Defending set pieces. <laughs> oh, I... is it this finally is the time? weekend. Is it finally time? Although, if Pascal's out, he's mm. the only one who can actually win headers. We need to find Forget out. Then. We need to find out from Johnny Cooper how many chances we are. It must be north of 150 now, 160 corners we've had since yeah. we last scored from one. I think it's 2,000. Right, mm. that is a lot. It goes back to like 2007, doesn't it? That's higher than I thought. Mm. Matt Heath. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'm sort of low key looking forward to this one because, on the basis that we didn't have great outcomes against them last season, I feel like it can only get better this. And that's the sort of simplified way my brain works around games. I mean, all evidence suggests we're better than them. And we didn't beat them last year. So there's a certain logic to it. It's not like when, you know, you lose to Man City each year and go, well, maybe next year. But we are, we are better than them. I think a good win at Ellen Road would be important as well. I was writing in the match report after the Cardiff game that, you know, as much as the some of the criticism of Farker and stuff can be quite tiring and I don't necessarily agree with it, I do think it's important that there is this bit of a disconnect at the minute still between what the fans want and what the team is giving mm. so I think it was it around this time last year that we beat Watford 3-0 and it was like Georgie Rutter was looking amazing something like that just to mm. give it all a bit of a lift off at Ellen Road would be really nice yeah do we need to win or do we need to win and play well we need to win 6-0 <laughs> how about that would I accept yeah, no, I, I think we do need to play well. And I think we need to get the, I guess, the Cardiff weirdness offers because I feel like every, no one knew quite what to feel after that game because it was so weird because they just didn't attempt to do anything. And we won, but it felt like anyone would have beaten them. So it didn't really count. Mm. So we need, to, we need to play like a normal game against a competitive team and actually win. Yeah, it's one of those, though, anyway, if, if we do win, and even if it's not the most exciting... I think people will eventually reflect and go, well, we didn't beat them last season, so mm. it is an improvement at least. Just looking through their side, and I see a lot of championship bastards. Who, who's there? Who Conf you, who Conf you just a bunch of championship bastards. Oh, I don't, I don't know, yeah. Eccles. Cake. Cake boy. Thomas Binks. Bidwell. Dovin. <laughs> Is Liam Kitchen there, isn't there? Right. Is he former Leeds? He, he is, yeah. He's um, he's not really played, actually, this year, but yeah, he is in the squad. I seem to remember him trying to start a fight at Ellen Road with mm. Barnsley, was it? Yes, he did, yeah. Back in the uh, promotion year, was it? <laughs> Baby, I can't remember. <laughs> it all blends into one. These are, I'm just looking on whoscored.com, internet charlotte and whoscored.com. I'd forgotten we kind of went, mm. sort of avoided them um, this season for a bit. Where relatively low-scoring games were produced in this season... We don't lose at home to Coventry um, and we don't concede many goals to them despite me feeling a bit bad about last season. So that means we're going to win? Fine. Let's win. Let's win. The odds suggest we will win, which, I mean, I've, I didn't... I failed to back Cardiff last week. What odds are Coventry? I feel like um, I feel like Coventry at home has got has got at least five to ten pounds uh, <laughs> <laughs> increasing <laughs> once we go, go ahead. Yeah, they're about you can get like the five to one at Coventry. I mean, that's that's printing money. Don't <laughs> don't gamble, kids. One of their weaknesses, Rob, finishing scoring chances. They're not going to get any anyway, are they? they don't, I, I like, we don't actually give away chances, so I'm yeah. sure it'll be fine. When you ignore the bits where we did at the start of the season, since then it's all been fine, hasn't it? Well, we didn't. We've not really given away chances in any game, particularly, have we? Like both, both. I know we did manage to concede three against Portsmouth, but it was offered. I know there's a 
there was a penalty. But the rest, of the other two were off next year, point one three or something stupid, weren't they? So, and Burnley didn't deserve it either. So, we actually don't. We are defensively tight, even though we have conceded a fair number. I've got a feeling that we might end up winning one nil, and no one's going to be happy. <laughs> Yeah. It might be quite a good performance. It'll be a controlled performance. It'll be 1 0, and everyone's going to just roll everything forward another week. Miss three or four good chances. Everyone will know we're not creative enough. That's sort of, that's just how this season is going. So, yeah, probably. Tanaka will come on for the last five minutes. You can get really excited about it. <laughs> Play a load of sideways and backwards <laughs> passes that everyone loves all of a sudden. But at least they'll be accurate, Rob. That's the important <laughs> Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Um, so, we did have. Uh, some stuff coming regarding the style into the mailbag. You can get in touch with us, mailbag at the squareball.net. Um, this one says, hi, Dan and Michael and whoever else. I think that's you, Rob. Thank you very much. Um, just wondering if you guys would consider Farker ball tippy-tappy football, and if so, is that a good or a bad thing? Personally, I enjoyed watching us pass the ball 700 times against Cardiff without having to worry, but found myself in the minority after reading and listening to many underwhelmed supporters in match reactions. Um, also, I think the Farker versus Bielsa comparisons are unfair, and Daniel Farker given expectations from before the Bielsa, from before when Bielsa came in, uh, versus before when Farker did. Uh, I think Farker's football is not all that much worse than Bielsa's thoughts. Cheers, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. I think the perception of Farker's football has changed over time because when he first came in, I remember there being a bit of talk, as much as anything, probably personality-wise, people saying he would have been a better replacement for Bielsa when we got rid of him, as opposed to Marsh. And because the football was still, well, not quite as pressing as Bielsa's, it still felt fairly attacking. But I feel like that's the perception of that has changed from the end of last season where people got sick of us being unable to break teams down to the point now where people are it's, people are almost looking for something to be upset about with the passing sideways business. It's, I mean, you forget how bad it was watching us under Marsh when we really couldn't string any passes together. I suppose we've gone to the complete other extreme now where we just pass and pass and pass and pass. I mean, I think Bielsa comparisons are unfair on anyone because Bielsa is such a one-off. Nobody's like him, so nobody is going to compare to him. But, I mean, Sam Allardyce hates the term tippy-tappy football, doesn't he? So Got a podcast called it. On that basis, I would call Farker's football tippy-tappy just to upset him more than anything. <laughs> Seems fair enough. Um, Ben's been in touch as well saying hi lads we'll be fine Farker knows what he's doing he's the best man for the job in this league yes it may not be exciting but we're getting the job done the squad's fine and better than most in this league predictions for Saturday 3-0 Leeds Nonto Piro and Joseph going up as fucking champions optimism equals high cheers Ben I must admit there was a bit of hearing Cardiff fans on propaganda reading out the list of prospective managers from the odds and going yeah I'll stick with Farker maybe it's <laughs> not maybe it's not too bad because the problem is you don't know exactly who you want as manager in this league so someone does well like at the start of last year if someone said you, you can have you can swap Farker for McKenna you'd have gone oh no absolutely not um, but then by the end of the season I was like bloody hell he's getting so much out of him if he was our manager we'd be pissing this league but then if he was at Leeds we'd have probably eaten him alive for some reason yeah. or other because of the way it is and the nature of the club as a whole mm, you, need, you need broad shoulders don't you yeah I know people get fed up of the 90 points thing in defence of Farker last season but then I was looking at his last three seasons in the championship. I think he's won 281 points combined, mm. which is outrageous, really. And again, that criticism of you can only like get these results out of really good players with a really strong squad. But then you look at his Norwich team, and I know everyone everyone names Pookie and Buendia, but even they were sort of plucked from relative obscurity. Mm. And the rest of that Norwich squad was kind of a load of random Germans who I can't really remember. It was like Vranich and mm. Zimmerman and people like that who... I haven't really gone on to do anything else. When Deer was at Cultural Leonesa, who mm. were at the time one of our partners, supposedly. Mm. Partner clubs. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, we didn't didn't watch him though, did we? No. Just sent plays there. Right. That was the last we we ever last we ever. Was did. that where Wasim Boy went? We actually mentioned Wasim Boy, didn't we, on the mm. member show this mm. week? Yeah. Did so, did Gucci go there as well? Yeah, so, I don't think either of them really played. I mean Wasim Boy doesn't play anywhere, but well, no, um, Idiguchi sort of killed off his Leeds career basically <laughs> before it started. I'll go so far as to say that I don't think Wasim Boy even exists. It's possible. And he mm. might just be a regen. Like just a picture on the website. Mm. I mean, did you ever see a picture of him? I saw pictures, yeah. Right. I never saw him play. AI. That's the, of his time. He I was, was going to say the that's prototype. The, that's the world we're in these days. Mm. Yeah, I do. I do. I do feel like it's. It could be a narrow home win, which we need. But no one's going to be pleased with the style of it. <laughs> it's just going to. It's going to happen because because Farker ain't for changing, is he? Really? No, not. He's really. not going to let the brakes off now. 
I mean, but then again, we absolutely thumped Ipswich last year. So was that just about taking chances and being more efficient? He's spoken about it. I think certain styles of, like, because Ipswich were generally quite attacking, it seemed to play into our our style last year somehow, didn't it? Things just, sometimes you get this, where in the same way as Bielsa couldn't beat Gary Monk, just because of his, the way he set up, so it clearly was just kryptonite to us. I don't know, Coventry, you, they did they did have that number last year, so let's see. But overseen by a little scum bastard, mm. which is unfortunate. He's the guy that saved Whiskey knows his job, didn't he? He did. And then I was miserable for 20 years. <laughs> but on the plus side, it's over now for Scum, so finish club. Is that what? Is that the... Well, they are, aren't they? I mean, almost certainly. What are they, about 11th in the league or something? Useless. Oh, no, so they drew last night. They're probably not that far from getting Robbins in. It's like some kind of... He knows the like club. Lifting the witch's curse or something, I don't know. Yeah, it's nice to enjoy that, isn't it? Very nice to enjoy that. Um, I did see a fun tweet suggesting that it was clubs who you imagine your rivalries to be against and who your actual rivals are. And Man United's was obviously like Liverpool, you know, Arsenal, whatever, but their actual rivals are Brighton. <laughs> they are 11th. There you go. Call, yeah. that, call that right. They're, uh, Optimistic of staying up, presumably? Just above Brentford. Mm. I think they, I think they've got enough to stay up here. Um, Anna did get in touch as well with a mailbag. Dear all of you, so you're included this time, Rob. Um, is it normal that I keep watching Brighton? Hashtag content to see glimpses of Georgie. P.S. They even did a squad photo this week. It must be why he left. It's a good good point, that. The squad photo could have been persuasive. I was talking it up the other week, saying you don't get them anymore. Have we done one? I've not seen it. No, we haven't. I oh, right, okay. Bright, you about Brighton. Oh, sorry. Right, I thought, I thought we have done one. Um, yeah, I'm, I've not really actually seen him, I have to say. I'm trying to pretend I don't care. <laughs> but then I saw him when he started for Brighton the other day, and I was like, I was almost sort of low-key rage watching it. Mm. Just like, and it was upsetting me seeing him there. Oh, see, I'm only Matt. Only on match of the day, I've seen little bits. So I feel like that's not proper stalking, is it? That's just, that's genuine passing passing glances of him. I want him to be happy, but I'm also pleased that he got taken off on 70 minutes because he didn't really do mm. much. Likewise, it feels really like pleasingly vindictive to hit the unfollow button on Instagram. That's like my little petty win now whenever anyone leaves. It's like, yeah, fuck you. I see, I'm, I never hit that. I've still got like, like a preel and people like that on there. <laughs> just, just seeing what he's up to with his life, seeing where he's gone on holiday and stuff. Right, should we um, rattle through some likes and dislikes from the last seven days? Factor all that into our thinking and pick a hero and villain of the week. Michael, you get a shout in dislikes from Adam, uh, who was enjoying the sweet, sweet taste of success from Leeds United in his sweet, sweet taste of tea from his new Junior Furpo mug. But he dislikes uh, knowing that the mug was packed uh, using exploited child <laughs> labour. Which we your should, children. We, we, I was going to say, we really need to stress for anybody who doesn't know that reference, it was your children. Yeah. So, you, that, you exploited. So, so that's within the law. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> You're don't, on don't, it. don't get anyone in touch about all oh, modern slavery laws and stuff. I'm not interested. Right. It's fine. They're absolutely fine. They are, also, they're not very good slaves, truth be told. Very, yeah. Uh, I mean, Adam's message did go on to discuss uh, caffeine and taurine addicted bodies for yet another 20 hour shift at the square ball prisoner camp. That kind of thing. No, they did. They did half an hour. <laughs> you, <laughs> got a fiver. They did pretty well out of it, to be honest. Some love came in this week for Nonto's cartwheel after Largy scored. Mm. I like that. That was a nice moment. More people joining in. Although, maybe not Solomon when he comes back. <laughs> Just no. have a ref. You've got a bad back and a bad hamstring. Familiar with a bad back, obviously. You are? Yeah, it's best just left alone. Right. It's what I've found. I've not... I mean, I used to be back flipping all over the place <laughs> in my younger days, of I, course. I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just I, it's how I travel sometimes, just cartwheeling about, <laughs> yeah. place to place around Costco and stuff. Just be, you'd see me vaulting, tumbling down the aisles. Vaulting through the aisles and stuff. But yeah, I've had to give it a give it a rest. Farker was saying he was worried watching that backflip about his own ACL if he was to try something. So yeah, I think Solomon, I mean, I think given his knee exploded last year, mm. he should be the last person who does that. Rubers was very pleased with the ref. Fabulous decision. And well done to Nonto for staying on his feet and then not being penalised um, by the ref. Can't believe I'm saying that. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, actually? When the ref does something good, we just sort of went, yeah, well, fine. Yeah, you should. You did your job, well done. <laughs> Whereas, uh, yeah, when they, when they fuck it up, we do tend to go on a little bit longer about it, don't we? So, yeah, he did well. He did well. Luca B, giving a shout out for Tony Drigo for being on Cocoms for the Milan derby. But mm-hmm. I just think he's cheating on us there, isn't he, really? I think he, he probably got the gig after the coaching I gave him. 
Oh yeah, for a bit of insight. The, for just just about yeah, how to analyze the game, how to present yourself professionally, that sort of stuff. So I, I don't uh, think I was in the room at the moment. That he's doing what, was, well. what, what did you say to him? Uh, what was the sort of advice you offered him? It's, it's pretty confidential, to be honest. I don't want to. It's don't, come on. You, you, you're with friends now. You can share it. You won't tell anyone. I told him about the the hard kicking thing. Right. Um, just to bring that up, uh, and, and I, I assume he did. You were telling him about all the great players in Syria, like Paolo Maldini and uh, Franco yeah. Baresi. They were tearing it up this season, weren't you? I still know Gazza's get on, getting on there. Um, Des Walker. De- genuinely did mention Des Walker, actually, didn't I, at some point? I can't remember. I think we were out, I think we were out there just chatting and I managed to get a Des Walker Look reference you're in pretending there. like you're friends with Tony DiRigo. I am friends with him, actually. We're going uh, kayaking this weekend right. together. Where are you going? The river. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. That's, that's good. I hope you have a nice time. Thanks. Um, do you want to pick a um, a villain of the week then? A Ken Bates villain of the week? Cardiff was so meek, it's hard mm. to really pick a villain out of them lot. Yeah, I'm trying to think who annoyed me. Should we pick Frank for trying to renegotiate the Rasmus deal? No, I'm quite grateful that we just want to yeah, take him so off our hands. Oh, God, there was no one, was there? I mean, Rubers has gone hard on Farker. <laughs> Farker is killing us. 40 more <laughs> games to go, I'm not sure I can take it. Jesus. We won! How did any of us survive like the Neil Warnock or Steve Evans eras if we can't cope with what's happening now? It was about expectations though, wasn't it? Like, Because mm. by the time Steve Evans is actually arriving, you've basically given up hope, haven't you? You're like, okay, so this is going nowhere. Fine. People wanted Steve Evans to stay as manager though. I know because mm. we were all just so fed up. Like Farkas won 90 points, got us to a playoff final. <laughs> God, just fuck off, will you? <laughs> Big Sexy Pirates penalty wasn't enjoyed very much. Oh, that's true. Yeah, missed a penalty and is now injured. Mm. Right. Are we... Wow. Just saying. He's had a bad week. Should we criticise Solomon for still being injured? Getting a second injury. Getting a growing injury. Yeah. Next week, what is it? Hamstring, back, neck. Sleep's funny. Oh, God. God. (laughs) An insight into Michael's life again. (laughs) Got a bad shoulder now as well. I was fine when I went to bed. No, I've got it. I've got it. We've found some true villainy in here. Isaac flags this one up. Cardiff City fans singing there's only one Neil Warnock. There you go. Oh, God. That's that's just, that's just sad, though. It's just sad that they're, they're thinking back to that as a good time. No, but it really boosted his ego, and that makes me unhappy. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that, that has probably been they, the most irritating thing that's they are, happened. They're getting the punishment they deserve, though, aren't they, truthfully? Yeah, they when are. You look, when you look at the league table. This will compound that misery, though. Fair enough. When they hear about this. Uh, hero of the week then we need to pick a Catano Barada hero of the week in association with the tuktukclub.com which Leeds United player would you most like to share a tuktuk with hmm I would go with Joe Rodon just because I think he'd be more I think he'd be freaked out by it I feel like that could end in disaster (laughs) (laughs) I think that might be why I want to well Bruce who runs the tuktuk club Leeds fan says they offer trips in Northern Thailand Winding mountain roads, towering forests, elephants, pristine waterfalls, jungle cookery. Imagine Joe Rodon coming face to face with an elephant. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely Rodon. <laughs> You've sold me. And his brother can come too. TSB 15 for a 15% discount on your booking. The tuktukclub.com, thanks to uh, to Bruce and the gang for the um, the sponsorship and support. We really appreciate it. Who's your hero of the week? Largy. The backflip, more than anything. I mean, full debut, score a goal, do a backflip, do an impression of Luke Varney. He's ticked all the boxes, really, hasn't he? Yeah, the falling over bit was tremendous. It's forgotten about because he scored a few minutes afterwards, but yeah, it was great. How can a man with such a lack of coordination in one moment, 30 <laughs> seconds later, be then be doing a backflip? It's yeah. quite incredible. Because say what you like about Luke Varney, he was consistent. That was indicative of his general performance, <laughs> wasn't it? That thing where it looked, he just fell over his own legs. Luke Varney attempts to do a backflip <laughs> down the uh, the low field's touchline and ends up in the stand. Yeah, like that. In a, that, heap, of, it would a, go, a heap of fractured limbs. It'd go exactly as you expect, but yeah, Ramazani is uh, he's a mixture of stuff. Um, yeah, I'd go either him or Nonto for joining in. Altenacker oh. overlooked again, but never mind. <laughs> Maybe one week. Maybe well, this weekend. I mean, if he needs to play more than five minutes, doesn't he? Come on. Once he you, does, he's going to be hard to ignore. You know this. I, I don't think that um, the number counters go as high as the number of passes he could do in 90 minutes. <laughs> Didn't he, didn't he actually genuinely complete more passes than any Cardiff player or something? I'm sure I saw someone tweeting yeah, this. Yeah, let's assume he, he so. Came on for, 
on the 90th minute and made more passes than anyone else. Good, yeah. Send us some Tanaka love uh, or any old nonsense, really. Mailbag at the squareball.net. We're going to answer some some of these queries on the website as well, aren't we? Like We'll do some uh, some articles on there so you could find yourself featuring at the squareball.net. Yes, we might even have some artwork already made up with Dave Hockaday's head on it because we want the uh, childish title of the ball bag. So I could, I, mean, I could change the email address to ball bag if you want. Yeah, do you need like certain filters for it on your email? Will it still come through at that oh, point? That's true, mm. yeah. It might hit the spam filter. But anyway, mailbag at the squareball.net, which we will, yeah, we'll, we'll, what's the word I'm after here? What's the word I'm searching for? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. No Compress, idea. that's it. Compress it down to right. ball bag. I see. It was going to be the square ball bag, wasn't it? But the ball bag just works nicely. Right, we will wrap it up there then and I will go uh, attempt to learn how to speak and think again at the same time. Fair enough. And uh, we'll be back with the match ball after the Coventry win and that's a win for us against Coventry um, and we will speak to you then see you in a bit The Square Ball Podcast 